ragazzi, oggi cerchiamo di mantenerci un po' sul leggero perché c'è 5 ore di lezione alle spalle, quindi non sono propriamente nella mia forma migliore. Uh, facciamo prima un... allora l'argomento di oggi, prima com cominciamo a considerare due fattorizzazioni tipiche che si hanno per le matrici. Una si chiama fattorizzazione L1 e l'altra si chiama fattorizzazione QR. E in realtà sostanzialmente già le, almeno per le matrici quadrate le conosce tutte tutte. Eh, eh, la prima ha a che fare col metodo del tipo. Allora, fa partiamo con un esempio che è la cosa più semplice. Eh, se io ho questa matrice, che ne so, 4, 3, 2, eh, mettiamo 5, anzi mettiamo 1, ok? Allora voi sapete che eh, io potevo, eh, posso eh, calcolare i determinanti di questa matrice senza eh, diciamo, eh, fare eh, formule ricorsive, ma eh, semplicemente riconducendo questa matrice a una matrice triangolare che abbia lo stesso determinante o l'opposto determinante, secondo i casi. Anzi, la cosa migliore è la facciamo un esempio ancora più semplice 2, 1, 4, 3 in questo caso voi sapete benissimo il determinante fa 2 però eh, come si faceva? allora col metodo del tipo allora nel momento in cui io eh, voglio eh, alterare la matrice senza alterare il determinante un'operazione che altera la matrice ok, un'operazione che altera la matrice senza alterare il determinante è sottrarre alla seconda riga il doppio della prima perché ogni volta che io aggiungo a una riga un multiplo delle altre righe il determinante non cambia quindi qua, eh, qua devo sottrarre il doppio di questa riga e quindi qua mi viene 0 eh, 1 quindi il determinante è uguale a questo determinante che è uguale a 2 ok? E infatti il determinante originale era 2 per 3 6 meno 4 per 10 però eh, questo metodo è un po' più ricco di quello diciamo eh, offre più opportunità del solo calcolo del determinante Ok, I will uh, say again, repeat again in English. Okay. Uh, we know that if we add to some row a multiple of uh, uh, another row, okay. the determinant doesn't change. Yes. So what we did, uh, the first row is just the same. Second row is just the previous second row min minus twice the first row. So 4 minus 4 is 0, 3 minus 2 is 1. So this operation does not change the determinant. So here the determinant, it's, it's easy to compute because triangular. And so. But what I'm saying is that this method is not just to uh, compute determinants. It offers more insight. You can get more information from this method. Why? Actually, we perform this operation uh, what we did we did that here we put one zero okay because if we perform the multiplication this one uh, meets only the elements in the first row and this zero meets the elements in the second row okay and here we put minus two one you see minus two two is four 
plus, minus 4 plus 4 is 0, minus 2 plus 3 plus 3 is 1. So this is uh, multiplication with the linear combination minus twice the first row plus the second row. Okay? So we got this uh, equality. Let us uh, then let us compute the inverse of this matrix. We want to get this. Okay? Um, what I want to say is that the inverse of this uh, matrix is just And 
this is trivial because you remember this, uh, this is equal to this. But in order to get this, you have to multiply it by this one here. No? But if you do, uh, you, you uh, call this matrix A, uh, B, and call, set this matrix, uh, call this matrix C. So we know that B A is C. But if I multiply B A, I then did this n times uh, 2 times 4, this 2 times 2, this is B times A, that is C, and, that, and then B times the event in matrix B. So it's clear that here you have to get this times how much to work. Okay? Now, what uh, you want? You want to, to, to zero this in order to compute uh, the determinant is not useful you, you can already compute the determinant too but if I uh, continue and uh, what to, in order to, to, to zero this element what I have to do I have to subtract the second row from the first row so I will get 2, 0, 0, 1 but if here I do the same I get uh, 1 minus minus 2 is 3. 0 minus 1 is minus 1, and the second row just doesn't change. Okay? What did we do? We took the first row of the extended matrix and we subtract, uh, sorry, sorry, we, yes, no, 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 sorry, and we subtract the second row of this matrix. So 2 minus 0 is 2, 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus minus 2 is 3, 0 minus 1 is minus 2. So, here, you got now a diagonal matrix. And we have just one more step to perform. Just, we have to divide the first row by 1 half, uh, by 2, and we will get 1, 0, 0, 1. We will do just the same on the second matrix. Three, half, minus one, half, minus two, one. And so, what is this? This is A to the minus two. Uh, you can say, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why? Let us try. The original matrix, the starting matrix was this one. I have to multiply it by three half minus one half minus two one. So three minus two is one. Minus one plus one is zero. Uh, four uh, times three half. Half is six minus six is zero uh, minus two plus three is one. Okay. If you if you are still not convinced, you can avoid. Of course, if you exchange the position, the result is just.
So, we will uh, uh, one, two, three, then uh, minus one, one. And we put one, three, four. I just put some numbers. Now we just perform light in the first year course. Just we want to complete the, the day. Okay? So what we do? This determinant is equal to the determinant of 0, 3, 5, 0, 1, 1. Then we can still uh, put this is equal to the determinant of one, two, three, zero, three, five. So what we have to do? We have to divide this by three and subtract. So zero, one minus one is zero, one minus five thirds is minus two. Okay? Of course, this determinant is minus two. One times three times minus two thirds is minus two. Of course, you can compute in many other ways. So you can do one times uh, minus two is minus two. My, uh, plus one, my eight minus nine is minus one. One plus one times plus one is plus one. So minus two minus one plus one is minus two. Okay? I developed the determinant along the first form. Okay? So this is the determinant. Here, 
these two first coefficients will multiply the first and the second, so you will get the sum of the first and the second. So you will get 0, 3, 5. And the third, you will get minus 1, this, plus the third. And so will be uh, 0, 1. Okay, I will uh, write again, again here. One, two, three, zero, three, five, zero, one. Okay. So this is simple. This is simple. What we have to put here? So we have to put the here all ones, and this all ones. Uh, uh, it says me that the determinant doesn't change because by the Binet's theorem, uh, the determinant of the product is the determinant of this, it, it is one. By the determinant of the first matrix. Okay? Remember, the determinant of the product is the product of the determinant. Okay. Actually, the way to prove the Binet theorem is by this derivative. So this. But I am just saying that here, when I do this, perform these operations, the first passage, the first transformation, here I only have coefficients, non zero coefficients, here on the first column. Second column, third column. Of course, on the diagonal and below the diagonal, only on the first column. Because, you know, you have the second. First row is unmodified. Second row plus the first row. Third row minus the first row. Because we added a multiple of the first row to the second row, the third row, and so on, in order to get zero speed. Okay? But then we did a second transformation. What is this transformation? This transformation, we, the first row will be unmodified, the second row will be unmodified, the third row will be zero minus, uh, minus one third one. And then you will get, of course, if I multiply here, I have also to multiply here. One, two, three, zero, one, zero. Zero minus one third. One. Uh, so, sorry, one, zero, zero. Like this. 
two minutes. Okay? What I get? One, zero, zero. One, one, zero. Uh, then I get uh, minus one third, minus one is minus four thirds. Then I get minus one third, and then I get one. This just stays the same. And just by check, we can check that this multiplication gives just directly the same result. So this is one, two, three. So this is I have to summarize, uh, sum up the first two. So this is 0, 3, 5. Now I have to do minus 4 thirds plus, plus 1 third is minus 1, plus 1 is 0. Minus 8 thirds, minus 1 third is minus 3, plus 3 is 0. Then minus 4, minus 2 thirds is minus uh, so minus 4 plus 4 minus 2 thirds is minus 2 thirds and so you see that you get the same result so we still didn't get the LU factorization uh, this is a this is a U matrix. This is an L matrix, but this is, let us call this B. Uh, but B, what is So, this is 
now the other entity. So uh, uh, we started with D. So we multiplied by M minus 1. So here we started with the identity matrix. When you multiply M minus 1, we get B minus 1, we get B minus 1. So this is B minus 1. Uh, in order to check, eh, we uh, just multiply this. Beside one problem that we will uh, speak about later, this can be proven in general. When we apply the pivot method in order to get an upper triangular matrix here, what do we do? We multiply on the left by some matrices that have all ones on the diagonal and have some non-zero coefficients on some column here. But, first of all, when you do this, for the first column, second column, third column, if you have n by m, n times n by m matrix, then you will get, uh, end up with the, you will end up with the uh, lower triang triangular matrix, multiplied A, and this will give upper triangle. And the lower triangle with ones on the uh, diagonal. And very easily, by induction, you can prove that the, the inverse of such matrix is still a lower triangular matrix. Still a lower triangle. It's not uh, okay. Step by step is given by just changing sign. If you it, so, if you have only coefficients on non-zero on some column, the inverse is just the same with the coefficients coefficients uh, on uh, below the column <coughs> to change, uh, with the change of sign. But if you perform more than one step and you have these coefficients, you can see that the final coefficients here are not the opposite of this. This is the opposite, but the other. Uh, this is the opposite, but this is not. It's not because there is a composition of it. But uh, it's not important because this is still lower triangle. This still has one all ones on the diagonal. So, when we are writing A, A it, it is the product of L times B. And this is always true. Always true. Beside one problem. Which problem? Let us take a two by two matrix.
I want to factorize this in L u, uh, at least using this uh, the middle as before, what is the problem? Here I cannot sum sum multiple on the first row in order to have zero because here there is zero and this will stay one. But this is very simple. I exchange the rows. Zero, zero. What I have to do? Nothing. I just keep go to the third column, 
With this, I multiply by three halves and subtract from this, and go on. Okay? So, what do I want to say? I want to say that if you remember, this I will not do because it's first year stuff. You can perform the pivot method. You start with the matrix A. You start with the matrix A. A. If you don't have some swap, you just multiply by a lower triangular L1A and you get upper triangular, let us say T1, T. So A, we get A L minus 1 T. And this is your L T. Uh, this is called L U because this is lower triangle, this is upper triangle. This is what we call L. We call this U. Uh, this is uh, usual. I don't like very much these names because, especially the U, because U can mean unidirectional, the complex set. So, uh, when we have complex matrices. But, so. What can happen when you do uh, perform this pivot method? That you, in each step, when you, maybe you have to exchange some rows. Okay, maybe you have to exchange first row and fifth row. Then you have to exchange second row and sixth row. But this, I repeat, I will not do. It's just that if you make the accordion exchange, Initially, because you, you, if you compose permutations, it's just a new permutation. Uh, swap of the rows are just uh, not permutations, are transpositions. So you transpose rows. But you perform, if you perform a composition of, of transposition, you get the permutation. If you accordingly permuted the rows of A, in the start, then you will get to the end without any further permutation. So you will get you will get that we will get one some permutation of rows of A. Okay? That can be factorized by L. Okay? Uh, in order to understand better what is permutation matrix. Let us uh, this is permutation matrix. You have only one coefficient equal to one on each row and each column. All other coefficients are zero. Let us see what happens when I multiply <coughs> this by my matrix. What I will get? A2, A3, A1. So this is a permutation of the rules. But If I now multiply on the right by the same by the same matrix, what I get? This times this so here A11 0, A12 0, A13 1. Then you do on the second row, the third row you get the same, so you will get here the third column. Then you will get the first column, and then you will get the second column. So, and this is not 
not the same permutation. So this, if you multiply on the left, this permutes the rows. While if you multiply on the right, this exchanges the columns. Now this is trivial, but of course, uh, what uh, what uh, is the effect on the determinant? What is the effect of this permutation on the determinant? In this case, it doesn't change. Why? Doesn't change because the determinant of this matrix is one times one. On the left, on the right, it's just the same. But you can see. Uh, can we uh, just uh, derive this information also by uh, swapping columns or yes? Because originally you got this, this, and this. In order to obtain this, what do you have to do? To swap two addition columns and then swap again. You have to perform two swaps. If you remember, each swap of addition columns of or addition, addition rows, if each swap of columns, or two columns, any two columns, or any two rows, changes the determinant. But since this is performed twice, the determinant in this case doesn't change. In general, if you have, uh, if you have a mutation matrix, may change just the sign. Just to take into account that uh, performing a suitable uh, change of the rows of the matrix A, we can get the uh, matrix A factorized by L times. And this is the so-called LU factorization. Uh, why it is interesting this? Why we have any reason to do this? Let us say that you want to compute. Let us say that A is in method. Each time 